Hi, welcome back to the Gapster channel. My name is Gabby and uh, today we're going to talk about my uh, vintage speakers here that you see beside me. These are uh, IMF ALS 40s, uh, my favorite uh, vintage speakers of all times. These speakers are very dear to me because they belong to a good friends of mine, uh, Jack and Margaret. Uh, Jack sadly passed away a year ago and he gave me those speakers a couple of years ago before that. And uh, I treasure them a lot because I actually love the sound of them. And uh, I just wanted to restore them in his memory because it's been a year exactly to uh, around this day where he passed away. So uh, I just Hopefully he can look down and see them and maybe he's smiling down. So this is for you, Jack. This is a tutorial on how to fix the surrounds of your speakers and what type of glue to use, how to add a clever nozzle so your tube can be easy adapted to your application. It's going to be a step-by-step -step on all the little intricacies and how to measure and all these kind of things. It all started when one day I was walking around my speakers and I looked and I was horrified to see that the mid-range surrounds are actually falling apart. So yeah, if you have speakers like this, don't throw them away, especially if they're valuable speakers like these ones. Uh, you really, they are fixable and uh, it's really an easy fix. You can buy the parts and uh, basically you have to measure exactly uh, the, uh, the speaker and uh, I'll show you how I measure that. What you want to get is one of those uh, calipers and uh, you can get this one of Amazon, they're pretty inexpensive. I'll put a link on one uh, that I like in the description below. And there's a couple of measurements you want to measure, it's very critical. The first one, and what's nice about the caliper, you can measure both sides one to another so you get like that and then so this is uh, in inches and if you want them to be in metric you just click that so this is 99.66 so basically 100 millimeters and the second measurement you want to get is the inner part of it uh, because there's a little bit of an overlap here and that part so you measure the inner part right here uh, and for in my case here it's 66.5 so with the outer one and the inner one you basically uh, get uh, an idea of what you want other measurements could also include the lip how big is the lip here and how big is the overlap some some manufacturer will give you all those dimensions as well and it's nice to have everything that you want so the biggest mistake you can do is say, oh, I have a four inch speaker. I'm just going to get a four inch surround. You're going to be disappointed that it may not fit. You have to actually measure, like I said, the, uh, you got to measure the outer part, the inner part, and how much overlap on the inner part is and how much overlap on the outer part is. And even then with a bit of luck, you should hopefully get a good one. And it looks like I have a good one right here trying to pull them out and even got like a plastic thing and try to but I realized that uh, someone glued those on like they actually used glue to mount them on I don't know why like it's nice there's no vibration but that's impossible to take them out without causing uh, damage so I didn't want to pursue it too hard and I figure I can still replace this around without having to uh, I mean, taking the speaker is not going to help me uh, uh, much anyway, so I can just do the same thing. Uh, what I want to do is I can, I can do it here. So I'm just going to basically take uh, all this out. The first thing you want to do, usually you don't have this issue here, but much destroy the whole surround. There you go. And then we're going to try, this one has a particular little little ring around it so we're just gonna take it out usually you don't have to deal with this so you don't have to worry about them but in this case we're just gonna take it out because i want to keep the original look so i don't want them to look like you know brand new speakers at the end okay so we got the uh that's around out and now we just have to basically 
clean up all the all the pieces that are here. So with a little flat screwdriver like the one I have here, you can see it right there. We're just gonna clean up all the little edging. Usually, like I said, you take the speaker out or you do it on a the table, then it's a little easier, but I really did not want to take a chance and uh, break the seal on this. Uh, it'll probably rip all the veneer and I'll have an ugly speaker to look at. Another tool that I found helpful is one of those little pointy tweezers. You can probably grab one that's sitting in your house. If not, I'll put a link of one below as well. And they're kind of handy because you can literally grab on very small pieces and peel them off. You gotta take your time with this. There is no fast way around it. It takes time if you want to do it right and not completely demolish everything. Sometimes they come out so easily and sometimes they're pretty stubborn. You have to uh, really work at it. This is probably the stubborn version, of course. But, you know, it's a mission we signed up for. So I laid down the speaker horizontally and we're going to basically work on it in this mode. And that's going to help uh, gravity assist us into positioning everything. So first thing we're going to do is make sure that this thing fits. So now that we have everything out of place, we're still time. If you don't have the right one, don't just glue it, just order the right piece. Looks like this one is just perfect. You could see that the outer part is exactly where it should be. The inner part is also pretty much as close as where the other one was. And uh, we're gonna, so now you could see that gravity helps us position it properly. Also for the uh, speaker itself, if it's on a vertical thing, then it might not be centered properly. Well, when it's horizontal like this, you know that this is gonna be perfectly balanced and centered. Now for glue, every type of speakers, you have a slightly, could be different glue. So just research on the type of glue you need. But for most speakers, the one I could find is, uh, this is just a cheap and expensive uh, product, but I researched it on Amazon. It has like good reviews. So I figure it must be all right. I didn't want to spend like a hundred dollars to, to buy uh, an expert one. They're kind of similar to, they're a bit tacky, similar to contact cement in, in some ways, but they're made for speakers. Now when you get this tube, it doesn't have any nozzle or anything and that finds that a bit annoying. So what I did, I took a piece of uh, shrink uh, tube uh, that we usually use uh, to wrap wires. So uh, I just got one that's close to the size of this one and basically you just put it on like that. And uh, what you want to do is uh, just get your, just a little flame. Just be a little careful, don't get too crazy with it. And uh, just slowly heat it up. Uh, you should get yourself a much, uh, like a nozzle type. And just let it cool down for a few seconds and just cut it on a little bevel angle. Just like that. Now you got yourself a nice application uh, tip. It's gonna make your life a lot easier. Something easy and cheap. So what we're gonna do first is actually just glue the center. You don't wanna do both together because you wanna make sure it's lined up perfectly. So one thing at a time. So because this is like contact cement, so you have to basically put it on both sides, wait for a few minutes to get a little bit tacky, and then you put it on. Make sure you have lots of paper towel on hand, just have them around. All right, so here we go. So I would stay within a millimeter away from the edge because it's easy to get stuff on. This stuff doesn't clean very easily. So if you do get it on somewhere, just take it out right away. Once it sits there for a bit, then it becomes hard to clean. So you could see that my little shrink tube invention makes things a lot easier. Next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna do the same thing, but this time we're gonna do the actual surround. Again, the secret is not to get too much glue. You don't really need tons, just a 
and it's easy to send it down as you do it. So once you find that it's a little bit tacky, you can pretty much put it back, put it on. We're just going to wait a little bit more here. Another thing you can do, you can use your screwdriver and if you see like any puddles, just send them down. You don't want any puddles. You can spread things up too. Now this is the tricky part. You don't have any second chances here. So you want to make sure it's in the first time because once because once you put it in uh, there is no moving it around so it's not really much of an option you might have a little bit of wiggle room but not a whole lot so be careful before you do any pressing down once you start pressing it down then you're pretty much done and if you have a good measured one so you could see it just falls down very nicely so I think I'm good to just press it down now. So I'm just going to push on it a little bit. Now we're going to grab our screwdriver. We're going to clean it first. And with the screwdriver, we're just going to just dab it down a little bit, just very gently. You don't need to, don't do any crazy maneuvers. So I just finished dabbing all the sizes so it looks pretty good. So as you can see the secret is getting the right size surround. So don't trash if your manufacturer doesn't put all the dimensions, don't buy it. You want to see the exact dimensions and then you know it's going to fit yours. Give it a few minutes to get uh, to actually glue. This thing is fast, it will glue very quickly. I mean it still needs some time to cure but you will get pretty much it's not going anywhere so now we're going to do the side so with the side you just grab yourself a little screwdriver and you lift it up we're going to put glue on the bottom and on the top and we're just going to go all around now we could have done them both together sometimes i do it where i do them both i just press the bottom first get that contact and then start pressing the side but Sometimes you take chances that it doesn't get centered perfectly. This one is you get centered perfectly, but it's harder to glue sometimes because you have to go and try to get in between here. But with this now you can see that you can just glide right in there and just do it fairly quickly. So I once you have the glue both on, on thing, you don't actually do both sides here. What you do is you kind of dip it a little bit and then you lift it up. Just to get it wet on both sides. And then you lift it up. Because you want it to dry and get tacky again. And we're just going to keep it lifted. And we're just going to wait for a little bit till it gets a little bit drier. Uh, always from time to time just press on this a little bit just to make sure it's still there is no pressure on it to go in a certain way or another. Okay, You don't want to wait too long on this one because you don't want it to start getting set at the wrong place. So what you want to do is uh, make sure again it's loose, it's not rubbing. And just push a little bit corner here, corner here, here, here. Just a little bit at a time. Just basically just push down on it and let it start pushing on the sides. So you have to keep doing this and keep pushing on it. Now with this speaker I'm a bit lucky. I have this thing and I can push it down and press on it. That's really good. Now some people, especially on bigger uh, speakers, they put little screws as weights or you can put some little pieces of tiny woods or something and then keep and then put something to press on it. But I find just constantly keep pushing on it. It works really good. But in my case, because I have the surrounding, I'm going to put it in and actually use that as a as a good uh, way to actually seal this down. Just gonna make sure this is still moving. Yeah, and here we go. I didn't glue this, but there's a tiny bits of glue here and there. That's gonna be enough to, in case we somebody else in a few more years wanna take it apart, so it doesn't have a big problem. I'm hoping those 
speakers will pass from generation to generation. Hopefully you'll see how long they can survive. So here, as you can see, I was able to restore it. It kept its same vintage appeal. It doesn't look like a new speaker or anything like that. So it's got that same shape that it had before and it looks just gorgeous as ever. In the corner up here, I'm gonna put a link about one of my vintage amplifiers that you might find interesting. And in the bottom, I'll put uh, 10 different songs that you can listen to, to enjoy your music system even better. I'll put a little speaker here, just where this one is, uh, where you can uh, maybe subscribe, hopefully, to my channel to keep me going. Take care, and I hope to see you again.